This is Corey Willis with PVI, and you're listening to the Diesel Podcast. I'm Adam Blattenberg from Diesel World. This is Dan, owner of Dan's Diesel Performance. I'm Braden Fleece, and you're listening to the Diesel Podcast. What is going on, Diesel Nation? We're excited to have you guys with us today on the Diesel Podcast. And today we're going to be talking with Levi from Unique Performance. You're going to recognize this truck if you're if you're watching this or listening to it on YouTube or see it on social media. One of the cleanest fortunes that, that we've ever seen. And he's going to tell us about that truck, a couple other ones, what he specializes in at his shop. And we're going to get into talking about Freedom Racing Engines. And they build engines for some of the top competitors at events like UCC. But on this episode, we're going to be talking about street use. So, you know, trucks in that 800, 900,000, 1200 horsepower range, the kind of engine products that they have that allows a business owner like Levi to be able to recommend to his customers and the support that he gets. And along with the engine, we're also going to get in the transmission. They basically go hand in hand. And we wanted to ask him some questions about rebuild kits and options for you know, billet shafts, converters, different things that that he's able to do when you know a customer comes to the door and says, hey, I want 1,100 horsepower. Well, he's going to need a, a transmission to hold that. So there's some questions we've got over the last few months uh, about, you know, what kind of transmission should I run? Um, you know, what kind of input shaft should I have? Should I invest in this, pay for this upgrade, or do I even really need it? So we're going to ask him those questions. Before we get to the podcast, though, I wanted to give a special shout out to a couple different companies. The first is PPI. And the win that they had over the weekend at Rudy's, it was a fantastic race between them and Firepunk Diesel in the finals. And we know a lot of hard work, dedication, and vision went into the, the vehicle that, uh, that they raced. We want to congratulate those guys and, and the whole team that put on a fantastic show. We also want to encourage you guys to check out DieselWorldMag.com. Diesel World covers all these events like Rudy's, ODSS, um, basically anything going on in diesel. Those guys are covering it. So just go to dieselworldmag.com, bookmark the page, or if you see an issue in a store, pick it up. It's it's great to be able to read the, the technical information, product reviews, and there's a lot of unique stories that they're able to capture throughout the year. So we want to encourage you guys to do that. All right, let's get to the podcast with Levi talking about Freedom Racing Engines, transmissions, and everything in between. Levi, welcome to the Diesel Podcast. I'm excited to chat with you today about diesel performance trucks, engines, and everything in between. <laughs> <laughs> what's up man how are you <laughs> pretty good i wanted to uh uh well i've heard about your company and, and things that that you've been doing in in the diesel world for quite a while and, and it's nice to be able to chat with you but for our audience we picked up a lot of new listeners and and um guys who own tons of different trucks and things like that so i wanted to take this opportunity have you introduce yourself your company where you guys are located you know what you guys specialize in to our audience Will do, man. Uh, we're a pretty small company, I would say. Uh, pretty well known on the internet, obviously, for the stuff we do. Um, <clears throat> we do a lot of Cummins, uh, Cummins stuff, uh, hot rod stuff, 800 to 1,000 horsepower trucks, you name it. Um, we blew up a couple years back with our uh, red truck, um, and we drove everywhere, pulled snowmobile trailers with, and went to Florida with. Um, it was kind of a huge hit for the industry, and People liked it. Um, obviously, 1,000 horsepower street trucks have been around for a while, but I guess nobody really pushed them as well as we kind of did, I guess. But I'm sure there's other people that have. Uh, don't get me wrong. Um, but other than that, we're pretty well known in the Cummins background. We're getting ready to get into some manufacturing here in the next couple of months, which is pretty exciting. Um, but other than that, we're uh, kind of a little small town uh, shop that known quite around the, the U.S., I would say. So, yes, sir. Where are you guys located at? We are located in Gillette, Wyoming, in the middle of nowhere, where people still ride horses around. So, <laughs> um, back west is what they call it. <clears throat> yes, sir. Yep. It's so nice, though, that, like, being here in Denver, which it's this huge city and rush hour traffic and all that stuff. So, anytime I get to go to Wyoming, I love going there because it's just, it's like the air is fresher. There's not really a whole lot of rush hour traffic or anything like that, and it's just like, I can breathe, and there's a ton of diesel trucks that are that are. There. Oh yeah, yeah, it's like that country song, "Wide Open Spaces" or something. <laughs> <laughs> so when you yeah, guys are sure. when you guys are getting, say, you know, a lot of Cummins trucks, what what do you what are you guys seeing? Are they mostly work trucks, or is it a little bit of everything? Where you get some performance builds, and I mean, you know, man, we do a lot of performance builds. There's a lot that the world doesn't see. There's a lot that we put on social media. 
Um, we just started getting into our uh, four-speed program at the shop. Um, obviously, we started building transmissions in the shop. Lots of failures. Um, you know, when you, uh, you know, split a transmission in half or you snap an input shaft or stuff like that, and we had to use, the, you know, used to send them out to Suncoast or uh, Kentucky to Bryan Parker or stuff like that. It was a two to three week turnaround, um, stuff like that. So we got into the transmission program pretty well. Uh, the four speeds, uh, 48 stuff. We do a lot of uh, factory rebuilds up to uh, what we call our Party 1010, which is our full comp kind of stuff. Um, we actually sent one off to a giveaway truck over in uh, Connecticut. Uh, it's called LGNB Supply. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, man, we do it. We do it all. We kind of we kind of get to pick and choose our kind of work. We're not really a repair shop, I would say. Um, we really don't get into that. But I mean, if we got some guy that came in and blew a head gasket on a Cummins or something like that, we'll hit John up at Freedom and say we need to set L19s and uh, you know an upper gasket kit, um, stuff like that. But we do the usual stuff, just the basic stuff. We get to kind of pick and choose, uh, but we got enough um, work to. Uh, keep us going, you know what I mean? That's the biggest thing for us um, until we get our manufacturing going, which is going to be our huge next step for our company. So, yes, sir. The the performance side is so, it's what pulls, I think, all of us in at the start in one way or another, whether it was like sled pulling or drag racing. And we see something like that, that race at uh, PPI and Firepunk Diesel had at Rudy's mm-hmm. event. It's like, I wasn't there, but I, I was, you know, watching, seeing videos and things. I'm just like sitting there watching these two race programs that are just pushing the envelope and, and especially like Firepunk's been doing it so long and, and, and nope. that, that vehicle's really dialed in and then PPI with what they have. And it's just that performance side is so exciting and it's fun to chat about and, mm-hmm. and see what you guys are doing. And I was having a conversation with the, the guys at Fleece not long ago and, they were telling me about you and 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 trucks and and the uh, the Freedom Racing engines, and I wanted to ask you a bit more about that. So we have a ton of Cummins listeners, and they are very reliable engines, but anything can happen, especially if you you know push in the power a little bit. What you know, what kind of setups are, are you guys using there in the shop? What kind of experience have you had with them? You know, whether it's a, a tow truck or daily driver or one of these performance builds. You know, man, we've had a uh, build come in from mild to wild. Um, like I said, let's uh, we can start off with one of the first Freedom Racing Engines uh, Street Stage 2s we got for them. Um, it was actually for the uh, the red truck, uh, the Red Fortune, our 13 Lammy Longhorn. Um, I bought the truck from Brian Parker uh, down in uh, Milton, Kentucky. I uh, obviously I'm pretty sure everybody knows Brian Parker at IKT. Very well-known guy. Um, him and I put the engine in down there together, um, kind of like one of the first big Freedom Motors I ever kind of did. That's kind of when I kind of got my ties with John um, down there at Freedom. Obviously, I knew Chase and Braden from the past from doing the stuff with our boot truck. And, you know, we wanted it to be, we wanted it to be 1,000 horsepower. That's exactly what we wanted. We wanted 1,000 horsepower, nothing less, nothing more. I wanted to drive at the Florida for Ron's uh, event down in uh, Mil- or uh, sorry, not Milton, uh, Destin, Florida. I wanted to drive it from Wyoming in the middle of winter, March, <laughs> you know, 30 below zero, uh, <laughs> when it's really nasty out, and drive it all the way down to nice 65, 70 degree in Florida and get, you know, 18, 20 miles a gallon and uh, be on the interstate and be, you know, be able to whoop, whoop someone's butt, you know what I mean, in a Corvette or whatever. Um and that's kind of what really set the tone for our shop was it was really popular. A lot of guys are, I mean, the industry that I've noticed in our area, there's a lot of guys that are really happy with a 750 to a 950, maybe a 1,000 horsepower truck, depending on their budget. And they're just, they're overall, they're just really fun. You know what I mean? Um, obviously, everybody's got their own input on this. Um, but that was really big for us, man. And, you know, the truck's still running around right now. I was pulling a uh, – actually, I sold it probably a year ago to a buddy of mine that lives in South Dakota, um, really good customer, um, probably one of the very first customers ever had walked into my shop. Um, he purchased it for me, and the truck's got 55,000, 60,000 miles on the motor, and it makes, uh, you know, anywhere from 950 to 1,100 horsepower, depending on, you know, the tune-up on it. Um, and it's, it's impressive uh, because, you know, 
how many I, – I haven't seen very many trucks, you know, live over 50, 60,000 miles at 1,000 horsepower. But, I mean, it's just overall impressive. You know what I mean? It's just the Freedom's got the – they got the recipe down. They got the got the recipe built. They got it down, um, top secret recipe, whatever it is. It's just simple. It works. Um, but, like I said, man, that truck's been through hell, and it's still kicking and still making um, – Upwards of a you know upwards of a thousand horsepower right now. We were just at a dyno day the other day, and it's still right in that safe, happy zone. Um, but it was huge for us, man, and um, that's what really got the relationship tied between us and Freedom Racing Engines was that build right there. And we had numerous calls a week, um, numerous guys calling, "Hey, I want to do this. I want to do that." You know, we'd be blowing John and Matt up at Freedom for estimates for a guy that wanted a short block and a, a long block and a fully dressed uh, long block with fuel and air, um, the whole nine yards. And um, like I said, to you, I think we've sold probably, uh, let's see, probably six or seven of those in the last two years. And, you know, those motors go for about 20, 25, you know, 20 to 25,000, depending on the way you set them up. And every single customer that we've had, we've installed one, has been happy. Um, just last year, in the March, we put in a street stage 1.5, I would say. It was called a street stage 2. We did another one um, for a customer that had a simply tuned truck, um, made probably 450, maybe 475 horsepower, uh, wiped out the piston ring, um, cylinder 6 got real hot, uh, piston basically melted right there on the lower ring land, uh, killed the cross hatching in the cylinder. I mean, it was it was blown up. It was pretty dead set, blown up. And he called me and he said, you know, what can we do? Um, and I said, well, what's your, what's, your, what's your goal, man? And he said, well, I, I seen that red truck that you guys did, uh, you know, a year back. And I said, yep. I said, you want to do something like that? And he said, yeah, let's do it, man. Let's do it. Let's, let's do that exact same thing. And the next thing you know, he's throwing $16,000 cash down and sending it over to John. And John's got the motor cooked up in, you know, three, four weeks max. And, here we go with another big build that's, you know, we're adding part by part by part, and that was just at our shop a couple months back to getting a second-gen kit and a grid heater delete and, um, you know, some other engine modifications, uh, powder coat, stuff like that, and it's going the same direction as our, our red truck was. So that red truck for us, man, was a, a huge, um, kind of a huge, uh, what do you call it, foundation setter right there, and it's worked for us ever since. Um, we got another one going on right now. I'm actually going to go back out to Indiana here in the next couple of weeks and go pick up another street stage, too, from a, for another truck. Um, but, you know, that Freedom Race engine, man, like I said, they, they really got the program down on the street stuff. Um, you know, just, just overall depends for what the user's asking. You know what I mean? What do you want out of it? You know, nothing lasts forever, obviously, but, yeah. Well, that's the thing with it as well as, like, we think of a thousand horsepower truck, and way back when it was, like, that was that was like the bar to hit and it's almost like you know events like ucc and some of these other ones you see these trucks going over 2000 but it's it's the reliability at that power level like you were mentioning the miles that, that you put on on your truck and, and how well it held up that i think is really the sweet spot for what a diesel enthusiast wants is we want to have that power, but have it last within reason. You know, there, there's expectations going into it. It's, you know, 1,000 horsepower or 900 or 1,100, but to be able to have that and then have, you know, the support behind it is is what's really cool because we know of Freedom Racing engines from, like, UCC and, and some of the top competitors that are running those engines and that technology that, that, that Braden and Chase have learned and and those guys at that level, they're also able to translate to these trucks that you're driving every day, no matter how you're using it. Yep. Yeah, that's one of the, the spots. And I love I love chatting with, you know, shop owners like yourself or, or just truck owners where they're like, you know, this is what I always wanted. I've had this truck you know, this many miles on it, and I love this thing. And, and that's that's the excitement and the passion that, that uh, we really enjoy, you know, hearing about. With, um, you know, with these engines – as far as like you know somebody comes into the shop and they say hey this is this is what i'm looking for what how do you direct them between one stage or or, or the next what are the differences between them you know um i guess 
what me and John always talk about. Um, he's got his street stage one, and then he's got his street stage two. Uh, his street stage two comes with one and then, uh, I think it's one point one and three quarter manly intake valves and exhaust valves, fire ring head, um, Carrillo HD, uh, standard length rods in the short block. Um, you know, uh, like say a customer came in and he wants a 700 horsepower, 7, 800 horsepower, uh, 6, 7, and wants it nothing more than 800 horsepower, John will send me the street stage one invoice that I've had in my email for probably the last two years. He'll tweak it here, he'll tweak it there, and all I'll say is I need full retail because I know my price on the motor. I just have to know how much that I make off the motor because, you know, sometimes prices will fluctuate here and there, or, you know, Parts will go up, parts will go down over the next, you know, uh, last couple of years. Everything's changed, obviously. But it's, it's gotten to the point where we know the pricing on these motors so well that, you know, we just text John and say, hey, I need full retail on this because we know our price. Um, mm -hmm. But I guess, you know, um, the difference between a, um, let's say, the motor that's in my blue truck, um, that's kind of a, uh, this year uh, we did a, a 20 over 6.7, which was the, uh, John's street stage two recipe. Obviously, I can't get into detail too much. He put 14 millimeter main studs in it, 14 millimeter head bolts in it. Um, now you go back to a street stage one that's going to have 12 millimeter main studs and uh, 12 millimeter head bolts. <clears throat> um, so that's kind of the difference right there. Obviously, he might change up the bearings. Um, he might do a, a standard uh, Carrillo rod versus you know an HD rod and a street stage two. Um, you know, he might not do a fire ring. Obviously, they're huge on fire ring. Some engines, some, you know, a lot of guys in the 6.7 world, they don't fire ring, and then a lot of guys, are they, they swear by it. You know what I mean? So if we got a customer that comes in that wants an 800 horsepower 6.7, um, nothing more, nothing less, um, you know, we'd probably do a street stage one, and a street stage one we would consider 12 millimeter mains, uh, 12 millimeter head bolts, uh, L19, 625s if it was preferred. Um, a standard Carrillo uh, rod, not an HD rod. Um, obviously, there's probably a couple hundred dollar difference there. Um, maybe some, uh, I can't really remember what John does on the heads. I think John does a little bit of port and polishing on the, uh, in the valve area. Obviously, you can't really do too much because the factory intake put them on the side of the head still. But uh, he'll put in manly intake valves in a street stage two versus a street stage one. On. He'll put a uh, standard stock valve in, you know what I mean? So. That's a huge price point right there. I mean, you're talking five, six, almost seven thousand dollar difference between Street Stage One and a uh, Street Stage Two from Freedom. Now, <laughs> this year, John, we uh, we kind of did a Street Stage Two hybrid, kind of like a Street Stage Two point five or three or whatever. And LJ and um, the whole Freedom uh, gang, they kind of give me shit, you know, here and there. Excuse my language. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, I'm the little guy there at the shop. You got Derek Rose, you know, you got Justin Andrade, which is basically what they call my big brother. And then you got me, which is the little guy, because I still got a, you know, a non-sleeve block in my, my race truck or whatever they call it. And, you know, this year in mine, we did a, we call it basically a street stage three, I guess. It's a um, stock block, uh, Carrillo HDs, 14 millimeter main studs, and 14 millimeter head bolts. And this bad boy is making probably, I'd say, 1150, 1200 horsepower on fuel. It's right at John and Chase's. Like, don't go anything over that. Otherwise, it's just going to hurt itself. Limit. And that's usually what they rate their uh, Street Stage 2s at, is the 1200 12, uh, horsepower limit and uh, 2200 foot-pounds of torque and under. That's usually Chase and Braden's uh, and LJ's safe zone. Like, go anything past that. You know, they could crack, uh, obviously, uh, crack the block, the cooling area, obviously, the center of the block, once you uh, bore them over, that's where they, uh, you know, coolant pressure will raise, cylinder pressure, stuff like that. John knows it pretty well on what will happen with these street motors once you go out of the horsepower limit. Um, you know, they'll crack in the, the coolant uh, jacket area. Uh, you know, dude, I can't even remember like really say what will happen because nothing's happened to me because I'm at that limit of, you know, fire on one side versus good on the other. So uh, it just really depends, man. Um, 
But either way, at the end of the day, uh, like I said, they don't want anything without fleas going over 1,200 horsepower. And I've heard that you know, speech since the first day I showed up at Fleece with a, a Hurt motor in my blue truck. Um, so we were going to do that, and that's actually, let's see, two years back, we actually had a Comp 6.4. This is actually when Freedom Racing Engines first started. Um, and Freedom Racing Engines Comp 6.4 is a, I think it's a 20 over, 6.7 block with a 4.125 ductile iron sleeve pressed in. Makes it down to a 6.4 or something like that. Obviously, sleeves in the block for strength, and we had that motor in for a diesel power challenge, and you know we got 2,500, 3,000 miles out of it. But the thing is, is with forged pistons, you can't really make them last that long on the street. So that's why we did the street motor, the street stage 2.5 or 3 or whatever uh, that we got in it now, um, is because we wanted to drive it on the street again, and we wanted to have fun, and we wanted to take it to Denny's, you know, and get some meals, stuff like that, and I mean, pretty cool to drive a 12-horsepower truck to Denny's and drive an hour and a half home if you wanted to. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> well, that's that's it. It really hits on one of the the key things is you know, when thinking about doing a build is at the start is determining what your goal is because as as it changes, you know, say you know you go in, you're, well, I might want 1200, I might want 1300, maybe 14, maybe 11. That's going to totally change your engine setup and your trans you know, your transmission setup as you go through this process. And I think being able to trust the the shop, the manufacturers, the experience that they have, you know, if somebody walks in and wants a 700 horsepower truck, the transmission that you're going to build for them is entirely different than a thousand. And the engine you're going to pick, you know, is going to be different. So I think that's where a lot of money can be saved. You know, we talked about pricing with things and, and uh, it, it is a lot of money. But it can it can cost a lot more having to redo things or taking that 1,200 horsepower motor, you know, spraying it to 1,500, watching the carnage, and then having to you know, buy it again or or you know whatever might be needed. So I, I think I think it's a really important thing that that you touched on was knowing what that particular engine or part, whatever it might be, is rated for and building to it because mm -hmm. it can cost a lot more money if if you don't really know and just kind of you know, jump in. And we, we've heard that story a ton of different times, just, you know, ch chatting with truck owners, shop owners, you know, things like that. So, so that's, uh, that's a really cool aspect where, you know, you can call those guys up and, you know, you know, exactly what, uh, what kind of power range that, that, uh, that's good for. I did want to ask you about transmissions real quick, mm -hmm. because we've seen, I don't know if that's over the last few years, is the the quality parts that that are available in packages like when somebody comes in you know you can get so much and i wanted to ask you you know as far as different setups that you guys have you know if i just walked in your shop and said hey i've got this let's call it a 2006 59 and i want an 800 horsepower setup what kind of choices do you give me or or what kind of options do i have in that you know 550 to 700 800 horsepower range you know, uh, so say you were, you know, uh, say you were walking into our shop, you had an 800 horsepower 5.9, you had the engine build, now it was time to build the trans. Um, we've been working really close with Ron um, over the last couple of years. Got a really good relationship with Ron Wolverton down at Suncoast. Um, he helped us a lot with our red truck. He helped us a lot with our blue truck. Uh, I ran into Ron, let's see, when was the first time I met Ron? Probably two, three years ago. Where was that at? TS Performance. Uh, kind of a thing in the past now. I don't know if anybody that's listening, I'm, I don't know if you know either, but TS Performance back in 2015 and uh, previous years before that was a huge hit. It was a big show. Um, there were some things that happened and stuff like that. But anyway, that's kind of where I met Ron. and We kind of clicked right away, and that's when I was driving a second gen at the time, and I was, uh, let's see, I think it was a senior in college. And that's when I met Chase and Braden and all them and the whole nine yards. That's kind of when I got my foot in the door at Suncoast uh, was then. So <clears throat> Ron's been very, very, very good to us. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you've ever met Ron Wolverton in person, but he's probably the nicest person in the diesel industry, in my opinion. Um, very, very helpful. Um, 
But you know, that man has really helped us uh, really change our transmission program here. And beforehand, I looked to uh, basically Jacob Richards at Fleece or Brian Parker at IKT to build my four speeds for the trucks that we had at the shop. Um, just because I was young and I was, you know, 23, 24 years old at the time and I didn't really trust myself. But, you know, everybody challenges themselves from once in a, you know, you know, great so often, whatever you call it. And they hit the nail on the head and they're like, well, this isn't, you know, too bad after all. So, you know, within the last year, Patrick, we, uh, we've been building our own transmissions in-house and we've been testing them, stuff like that. Actually, the first big transmission build that we ever did in-house went to uh, Giovanni Petruzzolo that owns Legends Off-Road and LGND Supply. They do a lot of big-time giveaways. Um, we supplied a, we call it our full comp, Party 1010 48RE uh, to them, which is a 48-swap, full many valve body, Muldoon shifter with toggle switches. Uh, Brian Carter, uh, Ernie uh, at Suncoast, the Ernie special valve body, the high-pressure full many valve body. Um, you know, we shipped them out of transmission and, that was the first breaking point um, uh, that I ever had in transmission building. I was like, you know what? I got this guy that just paid me uh, $13,000 for a 48 swap. I know how to do it, and I'm going to do it, and I'm going to nail it on the head, and I'm going to challenge myself, and I'm going to ship this man a transmission that's going to work, and I know it's going to work. Well, um, you know, it, it worked, and... You know, I haven't had a single problem with it. I never got a call from them saying it was messed up or this or that or they broke any shafts or nothing. And they had an 800-horsepower 6.7 that was 48 swapped with a, you know, 10 mil CP3, um, a 468 from Fleece. Obviously, uh, a little bit of hard driving involved. Um, some parts may have been out of their uh, balance point, I would say. And, you know, that transmission took every single thing it had um, or it took, you know, the engine that it threw at the trans, took everything, it, I mean, and smiled at it. It didn't even sweat. And, you know, that transmission right there had a, uh, a Sunco 27 spline input, had a 300 miraging intermediate shaft, it had a 29 uh, build output shaft, billet drum, billet band, uh, Ray Best with GPZ clutches, had Ernie Special, high pressure, full manu valve body. Uh, Suncoast build, uh, build accumulators, uh, you know, stuff like that. 4-2, I think it was a 4-2 or a 5-0 lever on the uh, drum. And, we, you know, over the last couple of years, uh, with working with Ron and stuff, uh, or, excuse me, with working with Ron and stuff like that, these 27 spline inputs, um, a lot of guys are breaking them at 800 horsepower to 1,200 horsepower. Um, you know, uh, just a little bit ago, we were talking about my red truck. Well, back when I owned my red truck, I was driving, you know, probably like, you know, some people would call me a, a dumbass. And I didn't have traction bars on the truck, and I wheel hopped a couple times while I snapped the input shaft off of the base. Um, and, you know, like I said, we snapped the input. Um, a couple other of my buddies that have, six, you know, 1,600 to 2,000 horsepower street trucks, uh, let's see, Justin Andres, uh, J.A. Diesel. Um, two years ago, we were at UCC, and he was out testing his four-door red truck. That's the truck that went, like, I can't, was it 888 or something at UCC two years ago, the four-door one. Well, the night before the, the event, he went out, and he actually uh, snapped the input shaft off the base at the same spot. Um, and this is before... The 37 spline input came out from Matt, uh, Matt Fanger, or however you say his last name, um, came out and everybody's tested it and stuff like that. The 27 input was the best thing that everybody could get. So, um, anyways, Justin went out and snapped the input shaft at the base. Um, obviously, base the input shaft, he got two holes, two or one, one of the two. It's been a while since I looked at a trend. Anyways, and, um, you know, like I said, he broke it there. I broke it there. I've had a couple other customers come in that hit lock up a little too early, second gear, that have broke it off there. Um, but, you know, for an 800-horsepower truck, Patrick, you know, the best thing for you would be a 27 input, a uh, billet intermediate shaft, miraging steel, whatever choice, and a uh, standard billet output. Um, billet drum, obviously, 
I mean, Suncoast, Calibrated Valve Body, Build a Drum, Build a Band, stuff like that. Might be a little overkill, but, you know, at the end of the day, I believe a customer that kind of overkilled the trans is better than a customer that underbuilt the trans and called me complaining, saying that they're on the side of the road and they broke it and stuff like that. So I'd rather push that upon a customer to overbuild the transmission a little bit um, than to get that phone call and underbuild it and say they broke it. So that's probably a pretty big pretty big uh, recipe for us on the 800 horsepower side of things is, you know, a 27 input might be a little overkill for an 800 horsepower truck to some guys. It might not be for some guys. Some guys can get away with it with a standard build input shaft. I've seen it happen before. Some guys are going to be like, no, I'll go out and break that right away at 800 horsepower on a standard billet. But at the end of the day, I, I know a, a 27 spline input is a good investment for an 800 horsepower truck because they're real hard, I guess, real street manner wise. An 800 horsepower truck can, you know, do just the amount of the same amount of damage as a 1200 horsepower truck can, um, you know, during the transmission phases or whatever you call it. Um, Second gear lockup, you know, freeway, interstate poles, stuff like that. I mean, like you said, man, the heavier the truck is, the harder it is on the transmission. What's, what's so cool with the hard parts now is like it, it's almost the, in a way, like the golden age of, uh, of hard parts in a sense because, you know, most trucks are either maybe tops 550. They got a trailer behind them all the time. You know, a little bit of extra power and stuff, not racing or anything. And then you get into that kind of just shy of 800 horse, somewhere between six and, and, you know, 750, 800, and there's choices for you. And then if you're going to go over that and, you know, like we talked about engines and 1100 horsepower and stuff like that, well, there's choices on the, the transmission side. And I could talk about all this stuff all day long because I find it so fascinating with the kind of technology that I really think the competitions that are out there, whether it's, you know, King of the Street Challenge, DPC, UCC, things that are being done in ODSS is, is these manufacturers have really been able to innovate and come up with creative solutions. And then those start to, to, to trickle down to what can I have for my tow truck? What can I have for my daily driver? What can I have for you know, so 0659 with, you know, set of compounds on it and, and, you know, um, some performance injectors and, and things like that, that you can now support it versus I think in the old days, it was almost like, Hey, this is the best build input we have. This is the best billet flex plate. It, this is the best parts. And uh, you made 700, you keep breaking it. You break it over and over and over again. It can almost kind of kill the enthusiasm or the passion that you have for a truck. But it's just there's so many choices. And I, I wanted to ask you about the, the transmission side because it goes hand in hand with the engine or just in driving the trucks every day, especially when we're talking about, you know, stock 48 REs or 47 REs. They're going to break. But in the aftermarket there there's so many choices and reliable you know solutions to making those things live that they are popular to swap you know in six sevens when you hit a certain power level and and different things like that so it's really it's really cool i'm glad we we're able to connect and and chat like i had seen your your uh your trucks before and um you know different things you guys were doing so it was really cool to be able to, to chat with you today i wanted to have you, you know, for any of our listeners out there, like, hey, I want to I want to check out what, what he's doing. I want to see, you know, some of these trucks that, that you're building. Where's the best place for our listeners to see what you guys are doing, you know, week in, week out there at the shop? You know, man, I'd say the best way to connect with us is uh, probably social media-wise, uh, Instagram. Um, pretty well known on Instagram, obviously, for the things that I do on there and the traffic that I can drive to our page. And that's the thing, John, is social media is a huge thing nowadays versus it was back in 2005, 2010, um, you know, and this is when I was probably in high school. <laughs> Actually, it was when I was in high school. You know, um, you know, you can do so much with social media. You can reach so many people, um, you know, for the, uh, the fact of just grabbing a picture real fast and post up something cool or do a burnout or do something stupid real fast. But I would say, you know, the, the best uh, way, you know, to see what we're doing is probably um, our you know, Instagram account, uh, which is Unique Performance Official on there, our Facebook page. Um, we're getting ready to get back into YouTube, stuff like that. 
Um, we're actually getting ready to hire a bunch of people for, you know, a little bit more marketing, stuff like that. We've actually been falling behind a little bit in our uh, online advertising, stuff like that. Just been so busy with the current demand that we have, um, it's just hard to keep up with more. So but that's, that's, that's what I would say probably the best for us is to see what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis is probably Instagram or Facebook. Um, obviously, we do get a lot of driving customers. Um, you know, uh, some days we do, some days we don't. Um, I'm usually tucked up in my back corner in my shop hiding. <laughs> I don't really like to be uh, bothered when I'm doing the big stuff, um, but I will come out and obviously talk to customers or whatever that want to talk about a build or something here or there. But definitely something I can't handle when I'm working on a truck is, you know, a walk-in customer when I'm doing my thing on somebody's truck that gave me thirty grand that wants to do this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, sir. Awesome. Well, we appreciate your time today, Levi, chatting with us. Tell us about uh, yeah, your shop, your trucks, engines, transmissions, and and uh, it's a great way, great way to start off the week. So, like I said, we, we appreciate your time and, and chatting with us. Perfect. Thanks, Patrick. Appreciate the call, buddy. Don't forget, diesel fans, make sure and head on over to dieselworldmag.com. Bookmark the page. If you're a diesel enthusiast, want to stay up to date on the latest in event coverage, technical write-ups, builds, tips, all those things, those guys definitely have it covered. Till next time, keep the shiny side up.